This is part two of our Manufacturing to Omniverse video, uh, where we want to create a very simple and quick visualization with data that we've brought in from different sources. So we have some data from Fusion, some data from Rhino. Here we're gonna set up a very quick visualization to work with things like some cameras, lights, some animation, and of course some materials. The first thing we wanna do though, is set up a very simple environment. Previously, we set this to this gray studio. What we're gonna do now is actually apply an environment. I'm going to the environment tab. You can see we have a variety of skies and interior um, lighting setups. I'm actually gonna to go to a template and I'm gonna apply this clean cloudy sky and floor. So I'm just gonna double click that. It's gonna take a moment to um, load this in, but we wanna make sure we change in the top right corner of the viewport from gray studio to stage lights. And this is going to give us our template here, which is a floor. And we can see that we have a sky up above there, some simple clouds in, in there. Now we have a couple problems. One is that our data is, of course, through the floor. And then we have some viewport uh, widgets in here that we want to get rid of. So let's first address the data on the floor here. I'm just going to click the world um, at the node at the very top of everything. And I'm going to grab the green arrow and I'm just going to drag everything above that grid. And then maybe just set everything to be somewhere kind of in the middle, something like that. We have a nice shadow falling off there. That's fine. And I'll hit escape. Now we have a grid. We have some lights in here. We can go to the eyeball. We can turn off grid or we can turn off the show by type. We can do lights and things like cameras in there. Or we can use the hotkeys G for grid, L for lights, just to very quickly hide those away. So now we've set that up. We want to go in here and we want to add some materials to this. So let's go to the tab beside environments and click on that. We have some beautiful materials in here. What I'm going to focus on is underneath the base, I'm going to use some of the metals in here. And some of these base metals are excellent for what we want to do. The first thing I'm going to do is address the, the chain uh, derailer section. I'm actually going to select the entire thing and apply a material to all of it and then start dialing down from there. So here we have a bunch of different materials that look pretty nice. I'm gonna apply over top of all of that, the aluminum anodized charcoal. I'm gonna right click on top of that material and go apply to selected. And then I'm gonna select okay, so that it applies it to everything. So I'll just hit escape. We can see that we now have that material applied to everything from that root node down. So that's pretty good. Um, now what we can do is start to dial in maybe a couple other materials on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is this crankshaft. I'm going to select this anodized black and left click drag it into the viewport right on top of some of these objects in here. So if I come across to this one here and left click and drag onto that one, we can see that we're getting um, some nice contrast, some nice different materials set up on this. We have this red uh, aluminum back here, but I think we have a nicer aluminum into Omniverse here. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto here and also put it on the cap of that as well. And then come down to the plastics. I'm actually gonna use this black smooth rubber and just drag and drop that onto the caps of some of these derailers. That looks pretty good. Now we can go crazy with these different materials, but what we really wanna focus on is a nice material for the frame. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to our V materials. Now V materials are a much higher resolution, higher fidelity level of material. So you'll see you'll get some really nice effects uh, coming from a variety of these different uh, materials in here. So we have a bunch of different metals, of course, in here. And one of the ones I want to take a look at is this nice car paint candy. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to left click, and I'm going to drag and drop that right onto the frame there. And that's going to take a moment to load up. We can see in the bottom right-hand corner, it's loading that material. And the reason is this is a, a more advanced material. So it's going to give us some nice effects on that frame. So we, while we're waiting for that to load up, Let's just uh, dial in our camera a little bit here. Um, what we're going to do with this material is be able to uh, adjust a few parameters on this uh, to get this to look a little nicer. But before we do that, because this is such a high fidelity material, we want to take a look at a couple of other things here. Now we have a nice basic lighting setup and we're using our RTX real-time viewport. What we want to do now is take a look at path tracing. And the reason why we want to take a look at that, I'm going to zoom in here on this paint, is to see the difference in the quality that we're going to get in this rendering. So this is our RTX real time. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to select RTX interactive path tracing. By clicking that, you'll see our path tracing is dialing in 
to a much higher fidelity render. And you can see that we're getting some really nice effects here. As I uh, toggle around or dial around in the viewport, it's gonna start to render that back in with our path tracer. And we can see things like paint flex on this material. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that object and by selecting the object, I get access to the material. So I'm just gonna double click on the material and here's the basics of the things that we can look at. The first thing that maybe we wanna change is these paint flakes. So I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna change the size of them, make them perhaps a little bit, whoops, a little bit bigger in there so that we get a larger flake uh, in there and then maybe spread them out a little bit more. And of course we can adjust the density if we want even more dense uh, paint fleck on there or perhaps less because we've made them a little bit bigger. And that's looking pretty interesting right now. We're starting to get some nice effect from that. As well, we can simply click on the base material if we wanna change that color. So I might wanna make this color maybe something a little more like a, a dark kind of uh, cherry red there. So now we have kind of a, a nice cherry red frame uh, with some some different flake effects happening in that frame right there. Now we could sit here, we could dial in, I could change the flake tint uh, to many different things as well, but we're gonna leave it with this red frame with this kind of dark orange or yellowy uh, flake in there, that's fine. So let's move this back and move on here. What we wanna do now is set up some visualization. It's important to note here for this high fidelity rendering, you can see the path tracer rendering here in the viewport. If we want anything real time, uh, with things like animation, we do want to switch back to our RTX real time. You'll see the quality change, of course, when I do this. Still looks great, but it's not as high fidelity as that path tracer gives us. Well, the reason why we want to go to this RTX uh, ray tracing is because we're going to apply some animation to this. We want to build a bit of a little simple turntable. And the way that we're going to do that, let's just go back to our content folder over here. I'm just going to scale up my viewport. I'm going to just add a simple animation to this to rotate this around just so we have a kind of a looping turntable effect happening here. And the way that we're going to do that is in our stage, I have everything collapsed. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a transform node. And that's that X form right there. Then I'm going to grab the Rhino chain derailleur and the bike frame components. So I've shift clicked both of those. And then I'm gonna grab one of them, left click, hold down and drag and drop right on top of that transform. And the reason why I wanna do that is we're grouping that now, we're organizing it under this transform. And this is going to become our turntable animation. So what we wanna do is be able to animate this. But before I do that, right now the center pivot is here at the middle of that crank. I'm actually gonna add something to that. So I'm gonna right click on the transform, I'm gonna to go to add, and I'm gonna to go to transform uh, op and I'm gonna add a pivot. Now you can see that we have this translate pivot. Well, I actually wanna move the pivot here. I wanna move that in Z to maybe something that represents a little bit more centered on that, something like that. I'm just eyeballing it, but maybe something that sits more into the middle of our assembly there. And now what that allows us to do is use that as the pivot. So we're actually pivoting this based off of a custom pivot that we've, we've made for our transform node. We're gonna animate in Y on here. So we wanna go to rotate and we wanna rotate the Y. If I left click, click and drag, we can rotate and see that it's gonna give us that effect that we want in the middle of that pivot there. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z to undo that. So everything's zeroed out. And now we'll set up our animation here. We're gonna go to Window, Animation, and we wanna go down into timeline. What we now have is a basic timeline in here. First thing I'm going to adjust is the frames per second. I'm going to change that frame rate to 30. That's the basic, you know, video frame rate. We'll change it to that. And because I want to make this around eight seconds of animation, we'll simply go eight times 30. We're going to use 240 frames on that. And then I'm just going to grab this end and just drag it right over so that our timeline is sitting here. Uh, maybe we'll go one to 240. So that's great. Now we're sitting here at one and we have 240 at the end of the frame. So the first thing that we're going to want to do with our transform node selected is we're going to want to drop a keyframe right here at zero on the rotate and Y. So this one here, we want to make sure we're on rotate and Y. So I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to go set key 
and we can see that we get this little red keyframe icon in there and that's also on the timeline there as we can see as well I'm going to drag and scrub this right across to 240 and now I actually want to rotate this because we're going to go around 360 degrees if we go in the positive way we're moving to the left or we can go to the negative way this way whatever direction we want to go in I'm actually going to do this uh, traveling to the right but what we want to do is not necessarily go 360 we want it to go to 240 and we're going to loop this so frame one it's going to reset so I'm actually going to put this at 359 on here to see what that gives us and I'll right click and I'll set a key there as well if I go right back to the beginning and hit play I get this kind of ease in animation right around and I get an ease out by default as it comes to the end and it starts again because it's it's going to loop continuously let's reset that and I want this to actually be something that looks more looping and the way that I want to do that is address how those curves or the animation is handled I'm going to go to window animation curve editor and then what this is going to do is drop this tab right into down below here so this is where you need to look what we want to make sure that we do is we're going to take that rotate Y and we are going to zoom I'm just using my mouse I'm, I'm I have a scroll wheel on here and I'm just zooming right out of this here so that I get all of the animation in here 1 to 240 because we were zoomed very far into there and then I can just drag over top of both those keyframes and hit F to frame it. Now everything's framed into view and you can see that ease in on the curve and ease out. What I want to do now is make that linear and I'll show you why. The reason why now if we hit play everything now is a linear animation. No ease in, no ease out and when it comes to the end of that it's just going to continue going as if it uh, is uh, animated forever. So if I hit escape on this so nothing is selected on this and hit play, we can get a, a quick view of our very simple animation on this. The last thing I want to say is that if we use our path trace renderer, we can hit play on this, but it's going to want to try to render every single frame on that. So we're not going to get the good viewport performance in here. Every time we stop, you can see the path tracer want to render. So I'm just going to drag that back and leave it as that for now and go back to our real time. So just a quick recap of what we looked at. We've set up a very simple environment to get some good lighting in. We've uh, added some materials in here as well. We've taken a look at how we can create um, some animation, how we can drop in some simple, uh, work with some simple cameras by moving them around in the viewport. We've also looked at how we use a transform node to uh, regroup things and to animate. And of course, our different viewport renderers using the RTX real-time renderer, which we're using now, versus our RTX path trace renderer.